Good morning. Welcome to worship on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. And I am Pastor Linda Wallstrom, otherwise known as Pastor Jason's mom. So I'm up here filling in for him while he is helping his son Franklin move into his uh, apartment he has in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for his next year of college at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. So that is where he is today, and so I am here in his stead. And he said that, I'm going by what he's saying, that the, uh, pretty much all the announcements are pretty well printed for you in the bulletin that I probably don't have anything specifically I need to highlight. So if someone has something, raise your hand and you can highlight it now. But I think I'm just going to commend you to read your bulletin and read what's going on. I know everybody's getting ready for fall and would like help with all that. And hopefully my sermon will help you think about that. So we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, with that, I want us to uh, get ready for worship by beginning with our service, with the invocation, which is, we gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn and share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, and you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we begin with our Gathering in him, all who hunger, 461.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. You are God, we praise you. You are Lord, we acclaim you. You are God eternal, all creation worships you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. All the angels in the heavens chant your praise in endless song. Holy, 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 God of power and might, glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. All the apostles all praise you, all the prophets acclaim you, all the martyrs and your faithful people worship you. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. God, creator, we praise you. Jesus the Christ, we adore you. Spirit of the living God, we worship you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Oh, Lord, be with you. And all. Let us pray, to get, pray together the prayer of the day. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, he may live as his body in the through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
A reading from 1 Kings. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. Holy wisdom, holy words. Thanks be to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I thought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. A reading from Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do, make, do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger, and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Holy wisdom, holy words.
We prepare to hear the gospel by singing the gospel verse as noted in your bulletin. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, this is an interesting lesson. I'm, it's one that I, I'm sure Jason was glad to leave it for me. <laughs> it's not really a story. It's basically what it's doing is saying, I am so frustrated with you guys. But I'm going to have to go through this all over again. I'm going to have to list all this stuff so you get it. You've got to get it. You're not getting it. And so he goes through, if you look at this lesson, it's like, don't complain, which, by the way, in the Greek means shut up. And no one can come to me unless they're drawn from the Father. I will raise up that person on the last day. It's written that way. You shall be taught by God. Everyone has heard this, and they've learned from the Father that they, that, this is what happens, that the Father is, the one, I am the one from the, from the Father who knows the Father from God. I have seen the Father, and I tell you, whoever believes, in, whoever believes what I'm telling you will have eternal life. And that that bread comes from, from our ancestors that ate manna in the wilderness is not the bread I'm talking about. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, that you will eat it and not die. I am the living bread. I came from heaven. Whoever eats the bread will live forever. Don't you just get this? That's basically how this lesson reads. And it's really to um, say, you know, I've tried everything. I'm just going to have to lay this out again. And I, good news for you. He, he had it last week. It's I am the bread this week. And you've got three more weeks of I am the bread. Because he wants you to understand this. I used to think we had five weeks in summer of, of this lesson that it had to do with everybody on vacation. And people needed to hear it, so they're going to be back in church somewhere in those five weeks and hear it. But I think it's more that he's just frustrated. So, uh, and I get that, you know. I get being frustrated trying to trying to teach somebody or tell somebody that's so important. This is a, a question about life or death. I've said that more than once as a pastor. I'm about life or death. And this is not stuff to fool around with. It is about your life and how you live it and how you die. Uh, I first learned of a person like, like Jesus was in this lesson back 50 years ago. And I, this is where I give you a little info on Jason. 50 years ago, August 29th, Jason was born. He'll be 50, August 29th. And the day after he was born, I met Dr. Miller. Now, Dr. Miller came into the room at about 5 a.m. It was pitch dark outside. I look at this little guy standing by the bed, and he goes, Hi, I'm Dr. Miller. I'm your pediatrician. 
I'd never seen them before. And from that moment on, I had about a 20-year relationship with Dr. Miller, the pediatrician. And he was an interesting character. He, excuse me, he was rough, he was gruff, he had terrible bedside manner, and he, and he came in at the most inconvenient times for everybody, but he knew his stuff. He really did know his stuff. The nurses, and I dealt with nurses more than just then, but later with our daughter, the nurses knew how rough he was and how gruff he was, so much so that they were afraid of him, but they were also in awe of his skill. And when he said, oh, you're one of Dr. Miller's patients, oh, they had to, they had to really do their work exactly the way it needed to be done. And so as parents, he often was someone that had a problem with us. Can you imagine? He knew the right way. He was trying to teach us how to be parents of healthy, safe kids, safe babies. And he had a way with babies. And he basically laid out the rules for you. And if you didn't like them, too bad, find another doctor. And basically, he had these hours that you had to call in. And I, I don't know about you, but when I had newborn, I was in the first one. I was calling every once in a while about something I didn't have a clue over. So he knew that, and he had hours you called in to him. You had to only call during those hours. And if he didn't get to you, you had to wait at home for him to call you. And if he caught you not at home when he called back, you heard it. You better not, or he's going to be gone. He's like, you follow these rules or else. And he had a lot of rules about, about raising healthy babies. And they were often against kind of mother's wisdom, the stuff you heard from your mother and your grandmother, like keep the baby nice and warm and wrapped up, even when they're sick. When the, when the kids had the croup, even if it was the dead of winter, you wrap those kids up and you take them outside and you sit outside with them for a while. Because they, they needed to breathe that air out there. You didn't care how cold it was. It didn't matter. Take that kid outside. And when they were sick and had trouble keeping things down, you don't feed them any of this stuff like oatmeal and biscuits and crackers and all that. You start with Pedialyte water. So you better get some of that and give them sips at a time. After that, you go to bananas, really, really old, ripe bananas, and mash them up. And after bananas, you go to fruit and vegetables, and eventually you get to the other stuff. You had to have that down. You can tell I still do. <laughs> So, I mean, he was someone that you better, you better be all in. You better follow his directions to the T. And guess what? You had a healthy baby, a happy baby, a baby who grew up to be strong under the care of this doctor, this pediatrician. That's what I think Jesus is trying to do for us in this lesson. Do this or you will die, he's saying. You've got to be all in. In our lesson today, Jesus is out there and he points out that he wants you to have a life that you may not want to be having. You might be out there saying, I'm going to do this, I'm not going to do what he says, but as a follower, you have to do what he says. You have to be all in, he's saying. He gained a following back then of thousands of people. We know he fed, last week we talked about he fed the 5,000 on something that was about the same as a Lunchable today. And he healed many people. He walked on water. He did all these miracles, and he had all these people following him. But then all of a sudden he says, I am the bread of life. No one comes to me. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. Well, that seems like something people would want, don't you think? I would think, or he thought that. But there's just one thing. You have to do what he tells you to do. You have to follow his teaching. You have to be all in. You have to be his follower. His, you have to trust him. You have to have faith in him. You have to believe in him. And that made it hard. And lots of people looked at all that and said, this is way too hard for me. I'm walking out of this thing. I'm not going to be all in. And a lot of people left. But he said, this is, this is uh, people that want the, do not, they just want the bread, not the baker of the bread. They want to have just part of this, but not all of this. And then he goes on and then sweetens the deal because he says, well, and if you follow me, you will, have, you will not die. You will have eternal life. And also you will have a life that's full, a life that's full of love and peace and care 
and all the things that you want to have as a, someone with a happy life. But many just turned away and left him. So now we get, here we are, more than 2,000 years later, and the question is for both all of us, how, how is it for you? Will you surrender to him? Will you follow him? Are you all in? Do you trust him? Do you have faith in him? Or is it scary? Surrender is a strong word, you know, like it kind of messes with things. Things can get scary and maybe even dangerous. Can you do that? It's said that when you, when you lead me, it's from a, a song. I'm, I'm, I think it's from a song. You have to let me know. But it, sound, it, it seems like these words are from a song I know. When you lead me, I will follow. Because only you know where you're going. What you say, I will do. Because only you have the words of eternal life. And what do we get in return for that? Transformed lives. Whole lives. Lives that overcome death. It gives us what we all want in life. It sets us free. It makes us the people that God has created. It makes us who we are meant to be. And so we need the faith to follow Jesus and trust in anything that God may call you to do, which is not easy. It's things like resisting temptation, letting go of an offense, getting rid of a relationship that just isn't good for you, following him into scary places. It doesn't just mean mission trips, which are wonderful and a good place to go and follow, but it also means work or places that you, or your family or places that you hang out with other people at that need you there for reasons that have to do with following Jesus. It is to experience God is to have courage. It is to be the one who manages to step up and say, how about you? I know what I'm about. What about you? What are you about? You have to have faith and trust that you can be all in. We live in a fragile, imperfect world. We're tinged with brokenness. We're cloaked in fear and unanswered questions. Some things truly aren't fair. But he tells us, this is hard, but I am the bread of life for you. Come to me. On September 8th, I'm going to go up to North Dakota to a church that I started in, the church that called me to be a pastor. It's Trinity Lutheran Church. It's rural Litchville, North Dakota, kind of halfway between Valley City and Jamestown, out back there in that farm country. It's a little wooden church with a steeple and a bell tower. And when you're there, when I, when I would be in, at the pulpit, you look back out the, out the door of the church and up above, and there were these farmers ringing the bells every Sunday. It was so fun to watch. And then they'd all come running in. A lot of guys were out in the fields working right up till when church started. They'd come in and sit in the pews, and they'd be falling asleep. And, and then they'd say to me, I'm so sorry I fell asleep. I'd go, you know what? When you're harvesting, that's the only rest you get. And maybe that's all you need to do right now. Maybe that's what's hard for you, is to come into church and literally know you're not going to be able to sleep, to stay awake through everything. That church taught me how to be a pastor. And, the, and the, that church knew what it was. It knew that that's what it did. It was there in the middle of nowhere, North Dakota, to teach young people out of seminary, although I wasn't that young, how to be pastors. And they loved it. You only stayed two, three years. They knew that. You'd move on to some other place, and then the next one would come. And they delighted in all the things that young pastors brought to them. And you could try out all this stuff you learned in seminary, and they didn't care. And they were really good singers, so they could sing whatever you told them to sing. And it was a great time, and they had a great purpose, and they knew it. They also, by the way, gave a lot of money away to missions, at least a quarter of their budget two missions outside of the place. And, they, and I, I know when I came, which was a long time ago, they said, we know we're not going to be here forever because one day our purpose won't be here anymore. And we know that because they're very small. We're getting smaller. And they, see, they saw churches closing all around them. Well, they finally decided they kind of had done the rest of the work they needed to do. I say kind of because it's really hard. 
hard to say goodbye to a place like that when they have to close and say, we're done. But that's what they're going to do on September 8th. And I'm lucky enough to go back and be there with them. They have shutters on the windows, bells in the tower. Uh, it's a beautiful place to, to see God and to experience God. So sometimes things are hard, and that's one of them. But they know, and if they were here, they would tell you that. It doesn't really matter. What matters is their faith and their trust and the love of God in their lives that has been there for them all along for all these many, many years, through many generations. And they are taking that love and themselves into other places that aren't that far away. A lot of people are going into Valley City and going to churches there, and it'll be fine. And they know they'll be fine. And those of us who have left and come back and we're reminiscing about how wonderful it was there also know they'll be fine. It, it's, a, it's a wonderful life, an interesting life, and a hard life to be one who follows and trusts. It really is. It's a fresh way of seeing with sunlight no matter what. It's filled with empty, your world can be filled with emptiness, but it's full of, some, of something else. Love. God's love for you. God's love for everybody around you. And that is what you are called to do. You replace doubt with faith and fear with trust. And Jesus then opens the door to renewed hope for every one of us. No matter where we are in this world, no matter what is happening, what politics is going on, what else is going on in your world, Jesus opens the door to a, a full and fruitful life, whatever that may be for you. And that's why Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He picks that bread as a metaphor for himself, the bread of life, as the one who saves us, who sustains us, who keeps us in the wilderness we find ourselves in, the center of our community, the center of where we live, and, and, he, and we depend on. And he says, whoever eats this bread will live forever. That's the table that Jesus Christ sets for all of us. Loving God and loving others is not demonstrated by posting catchy slogans or retweeting a verse a day on the internet. It is about a willingness to be inconvenienced, to be uncomfortable, to adjust our lives to the benefit of those around us. Nowhere is this best illustrated, I think, in John 3.16. That's my favorite verse. But I have a, par a paraphrase I thought was really kind of neat with that verse. because I'm sure a lot of you know the verse. And the paraphrase is, for God so loved the world that God made us for love. For God so loved the world that God was incarnate love. For God so loved the world that God empowered us to love, even our enemies, even the worst person on Twitter, even those who seem incapable of love. For God so loved the world that God called us to death, indeed to walk ahead of us in death, because God knew that the, on the other side was resurrection and eternal life. Love is demonstrated not by what we hold on to, our possessions, our way of life. It is demonstrated by every opportunity you take to step out maybe into uncomfortable places, places that are scary, and take a, take a chance and give what God has given you to someone else around you. Give them that love that they need God is calling you to pursue that call you have, wherever that is. I know for me, it's taken me lots of places, and it's made me whole every time I've taken a chance and stepped out. Take it from me, I know. Amen.
this is where I feel really old. I gotta hold on to stuff. <laughs> up and down here. And also my singing voice isn't as good as it used to be. That's what happens with age, right? We're gonna continue the service uh, with the prayers of the people. Lord, reignite prayer to, for the church, and by your spirit, root your church around the globe in prayer and spiritual practices, especially in the world that we are living in these days. Lord, in your mercy, we rely on the goodness of your creation in everything we do. We pray for trees that offer shade and for our fellow creatures that depend on the trees for shelter and food. Sustain the work of all who advocate for forests and wilderness. Lord, in your mercy. Guide our leaders and nations with a spirit of justice and mercy. Let no evil come out of our mouths, but rather let us extend grace. We pray for our enemies. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain feeding ministries and organizations such as ELCA World Hunger and our local food pantries. And we lift up especially before you prisons and all the work they do. We work and pray for a day when hunger is no more. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered here be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Be with all who are hurting, grieving, or ill. Lord, in your mercy. We remember the saints who have gone before us in faith, trusting in the promise of the resurrection. We find hope in your communion of saints of all times and places. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, now may the light of God surround us, the love of God enfold us, the presence of God watch over and protect us. For wherever we are, our God is also there. We close as we began in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise if you are able as we sing together our closing hymn, On Our Way Rejoicing. <laughs>
in peace, you are the body of Christ.